All right, so we continue to drop the EVs of the week. I feel like every manufacturer that is out there today is trying to figure out a way to do a drop in April of their EV. And, uh, you know, today's no different. We're going to do it with Alpha. They're an electric vehicle startup company based out of California, Irvine, California. And they've basically dropped in this cool looking truck, kind of a retro vibe called the Alpha Wolf Plus. I like it. Kinda, I'm not sure, maybe it's gonna grow on me. We'll see how that kind of comes together. Basically what they're doing is the Alpha Wolf electric truck does share a platform with the company's Alpha Jacks four-seater CUV. Additionally, the EV company also has an Ace Coupe, uh, their Ace Performance Coupe uh, and Icon uh, in its lineup. And of course, unlike the bizarre shape of say the, you know, what Tesla's doing on the Cybertruck, this truck actually looks like a pickup truck you would have seen maybe a decade ago. I know I, that maybe sound like a knock, but it's not. The point is, is the design cues and the styling is very traditional in the sense of how pickup trucks look. So uh, in that regard, uh, this could attract a lot of pickup truck owners. I always kind of wonder when you look at the truck sector, whether you're Rivian or Tesla or anybody that's really going after that truck market, are you concerned about the truck sector being so alienated by the design thematic of what you're doing as a company? Maybe that's the direction that Alpha's going in terms of trying to go with something that's a little bit more comfortable and that typical pickup truck owners could look at and say, okay, this is, you know, I feel comfortable with this and it's an EV, I like that. Size-wise, the Alpha is basically uh, very similar to say, what was once upon a time, the Chevrolet S10. If you remember those, they were kind of a, a fairly legit uh, mini truck. Uh, that one had, or this one has 188 inches uh, long. It's about two inches shorter than a single cab short bed S10 and about eight, eight inches wider and two inches, about two and a half inches taller um, than the S10. So that kind of gives you an idea of where this truck sets in terms of its presence on the street. Um, it's gonna be pretty cool. The, the thing I like about this is some of its features, but most of all, I like its price. Uh, this is definitely coming in at the lower end of where many of the vehicles are coming, including the Cybertruck, which we've been told and hope to see a $40,000 price tag, but this one is coming in at an MSRP of 40,000 to 48,000 with a 250 to 275 mile range, very respectable dual motor, four wheel drive. So you gotta have that. Uh, you can also get, if you want something more street worthy, it's gonna become in a single motor, real wheel drive as well. Zero to 60, not ridiculously fast, but it's definitely not sluggish, like maybe an ICE vehicle of that category. 5.9 seconds to uh, zero to 60, so that's pretty cool. The other thing is its towing capacity here, which um, interesting how a vehicle of this size can tow this much weight, 6,724 6, pounds of towing capacity. This is a workhorse. So this may end up in uh, fleets, uh, could work uh, out in the service sectors. You know, I'm thinking like everybody that's in the AC, plumbing, those kinds of businesses who need a pickup truck with, you know, a lot more uh, capability of handling a lot of payload and cargo and or towing, towing a trailer or showing you know, some kind of device if you're in the landscape business, those kind of things. There's gonna be a big market for that because if you understand, Ford uh, and Toyota really kind of control the pickup truck market from the aspect of sales. If you look at the Tacoma and kind of where it's going, I'd love to see a Tacoma electric vehicle. Oh my goodness, that would be unbelievable. Toyota, I know you're listening to this. I know you're listening out there. Let's get some electric trucks going uh, out of the Toyota uh, marketplace. I think that would be an absolutely showstopper for sure. This truck though, the Alpha Wolf Plus is available to reserve now so you can go get it. Uh, it's $36,000 uh, to 46,000 with the same range um, and half the towing capacity in the lighter weight one. Uh, I'm assuming that's because it's just a two, you know, or a, not a two wheel drive, but a single motor. Other notes that are kind of interesting, this is about half the price of the Rivian R1T, uh, but you're also getting half the features. It's likely going to be the cheapest EV pickup that's been, at least so far, been announced uh, so far. And I think when you look at what Alpha is doing, 
This is the other thing that I'm kind of interested in, and this is something we've started to talk about uh, here within, even my, you know, we had a conversation on um, Clubhouse the other night about this very thing, and the, the whole issue was for pickup owners, uh, kind of what I referenced a little bit earlier, is there's a certain familiarity with how and what they expect a truck to do. And more importantly, how and what they expect a truck to look like. So I think Alpha's design styling of going in this direction of kind of more retro, true truck-esque design, I think is gonna win over the 50% or 60% of truck owners that weren't ready to pull the trigger on the Cybertruck or aren't really ready to go into the 70 and $80,000 range for a Rivian but want to go in the direction of getting a, an electric vehicle uh, or at least an electric pickup truck. I'm kind of in that market right now. I've got my reservation in for a Rivian. I'm hoping that I can get one in early next year. We'll see how that kind of comes together. Again, you know, who knows when the Cybertruck is going to land. And this could be one of the categories of, of vehicles that actually make it to market maybe earlier than both Rivian, other than what we've seen with the early releases on Rivian, uh, than what Rivian is doing and also what Tesla is doing. So Alpha is going to be one of those companies to watch. Um, if you haven't seen some of their other cars, you got to check them out. They're kind of interesting looking. They have just a different kind of design hint than what most of the uh, EV trajectory designs have been. But my point is this, is, is when you look at designs, and we just covered uh, the Mercedes EQS and this is my example of this, is that when you have a vehicle that's coming over from a traditional um, you know, car manufacturer, you know, a legacy uh, ice manufacturer, and they're moving into the uh, EV space, I feel like you really have to jump, really jump up in terms of the level of differences that you have to make that car become, or, or truck, or pickup. You just have to do it. Um, because the expectation for other company, companies that are EV makers already are setting design standards. Whether you like or hate the Lucid, the fact is it's a beautiful vehicle. The, the sexiness of that car, uh, the Air Dream, is absolutely off the charts. Whether you like or hate Tesla, the fact that the Cybertruck is so different also makes it so compelling. So. When I look at these ICE manufacturers and what they have to be doing to kind of go to that next level, I'm intrigued that the EV market is actually going the other way with Alpha, where they're designing something that actually looks more like an ICE vehicle than what would be a new EV vehicle. Even though I do get a lot of people on Twitter that tell me that the Rivian looks really more like a Ford F-150. And I, there are some design cues with the Rivian that definitely kind of fall into that pace. But anyway, if you're a truck lover, and you're out there, hit in the comments below which one of the trucks that you've seen so far, whether it's the Alpha Wolf Plus, the Rivian RT1, or maybe the Cybertruck, all you Tesla fans and Tesla haters. Oh, and by the way, we gotta do some kissing up to Tesla, you know, cause we kiss on Tesla so much here. So we don't kiss on Tesla so much here. I, yes, I drive a Tesla, but it doesn't mean I'm a fanboy. It means I am very uh, cognizant of what they've done so far. But anyway, back to the note of getting stuff into the, you know, the comments right down below. There are the things below the video. I know some of you guys don't know what comments are, but that's okay. You can start using them. So you just type in there. I know you might have to be logged into YouTube. It's one of those things, you know, it's kind of a thing. Uh, put one of your pseudonyms, I hate Tesla, or I'm a Tesla crap boy, or any of those kinds of things. Those are the best ones I like. Uh, make sure and give us your input on what you think is going to be the truck that wins the day for 2021. 2022, all bets are off because there's going to be a lot, there'll probably be another 15 trucks that will drop, and who knows what's going to be coming down the pipe. If you haven't looked at that canoe, by the way, very interesting vehicle. Show some screenshots of this one. This one is a different one too. If you like the canoe, put it down there as well. Otherwise, if you'd like to see more of this or you're listening to this over on the podcast, just make sure and subscribe. If you're watching this here on YouTube, make sure and like the video, give us a thumbs up, tell us what you'd like to know or see next on Tech Path. And if you have an idea for the show, just shoot us an email. It's producer at reverendnetworks.com. You can always hit me up on Twitter. 
I love you there. It's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.